Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, the ground and pillar of truth. Who is the ground and pillar of truth? The living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. <laughs> had a very, um, <laughs> had a very busy uh, weekend here recently. Um, in so much as the fact that I was pretty much away from online responsibilities, except for here a little, there a little, um, looking at some links uh, that I was sent and whatnot. But had a very, very, <laughs> very busy week. Um, and also, too, Passover is this Sunday, which happens to be my wife's birthday. Uh, so also another busy week. And plus, the weather out here has been very favorable. And of course, whenever the weather is favorable, we get out our tracks and psh, we're out there tracting, out there tracting and being witnesses whenever the Lord will so use us to be. Okay, so that's what's been going on. Been very, very busy, very busy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, thank you for those of you who have prayed for us and thank you. For those of you, the Church of the Living God, for all that you have done and given unto us, um, praise the Lord for you and may the Lord recompense you with the sea, everything that you have done. Um, without you, we would be in a whole heap of trouble. And praise the Lord for every single one of you. Every single one of you. It doesn't matter how big or how small Every, every little thing helps us um, in every way, shape, and form. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Um, and also very quickly, brethren, um, it has come to my attention that um, YouTube, there have been those of you out there who have put links in like the comment section on some of the videos and they disappear, okay? And I have moderators for the channel, okay? There are moderators, and those of you, you know who you are. The moderators who are for the channel here would not be removing links that are beneficial, educational, helpful onto the Church of the Living God. Um, they would not do such as that. Um, YouTube would, okay? So be, be aware, brethren, um, if you leave a comment on one of the videos and it disappears, I'm not, I'm not removing your comments or your links. Um, and the moderators for the channel, they would not do that unless it was like every once in a while, um, one of the three who I think it is, uh, one of the three devils will send links to a porn site. Uh, those the moderators take down, uh, praise you <laughs> uh, for all those uh, moderators who um, are generous enough to give their time to do uh, such for a sinner who is chief, your servant. Thank you. Thank you. If you, if you want something, if you want me to look at something like a link, Brethren, Church of the Living God, um, there's an email address uh, uh, in the About section uh, on the channel here. Send me a link that way, okay? Send that then. If you want me to look at something, uh, <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will try to get to it as soon as possible when the Lord gives time. We're very busy. But, um, and also your emails again. Um, have, be patient. <laughs> be patient. If I haven't gotten to your email. It's not funny, but just please be patient. Be patient. I understand now how there are some who 
used to have their email available and then they get overloaded with questions. A lot of it is spam and offensive things, which I think is probably one of the three devils who uh, attack me quite often. Uh, don't know, don't care, but there there are a lot of good questions out there and I just haven't gotten to them all. So please be patient. Please. Now, enough of that. Enough of that. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Luke chapter 16. <clears throat> Luke chapter 16. We are going to be reading here in Luke chapter 16, verses 1 on to verse 15. Okay, and we're going to make some stops along the way. Okay, this is for our instruction in righteousness, which the church of the living God, the body of Christ, you know, the ground and pillar of truth, we need a lot of that right now. We really do. Okay? So, Luke chapter 16, verses 1 on to verse 15. Of course, follow me along. And he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Steward. Steward is called to be what? Faithful. A steward is responsible for goods that are not his own. Okay? We are to be good stewards of what the Lord has given us. Okay? Whether it be wisdom. Whether it be giving unto others. Whether it going up to a complete stranger, even in this time, who you don't even know their name, and they ask you for a hug. How many of you got the guts to do that, huh? <laughs> but we, we are stewards. We are stewards. We are called to be stewards, faithful. To be out there faithful unto our Lord in whatever capacity it is that he hath put you into. Okay? But we see right here, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. You as the church of the living God, how are you doing with his goods? Are you sharing it or are you hoarding it? And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Give account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Okay, so this uh, steward was called to give an account, obviously. Okay, this rich man, his lord, kicking him out. You're, you're, you're done. You're done. Okay, so with this judgment on the steward, you would think uh, if this steward had at heart hit the rich man, his lord's uh, mercies, his will, if he truly loved his Lord, unto whom the, this Lord gave him the stewardship, you would think that he would be sorrowful and repentant, right? What if the Lord gave you something, and because you weren't a good steward, he took it away from you? What do you do? Do you cry over spilt milk? Because remember the children of Israel in the book of Numbers. When the Lord said, okay, see, see, there's the promised land, uh, Numbers chapter 11, uh, around that, around there some place. He said, okay, see that? That's the, the promised land that I said I'm giving you. Go get it. <laughs> Go get it. I'm with you. I'll be with you. You'll, you'll get it because I said I was going to give it to you. But there it is. Go, go get it. You know, putting legs into your prayers. You just don't sit on your duff and pray 
and sit there it's like okay lord i'm waiting for you to do all this no 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 see faith is what we do okay that is what we do okay god by grace through faith god's grace here you go by faith we do okay we don't save ourselves no 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 we have faith on what the lord has already done yes okay but see we put legs in our prayers we go out there okay we have to put legs in them okay we just don't sit there and like wait from heaven no 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 no. could the lord do that yeah sure of course he could but he wants us to get out there and do what we can when we can in whatever capacity he has given us even at this late hour it's called being a good steward okay and what he has given he can surely take away and if you are of his bones and of his flesh you know the church of the living god that ought to really stir in you something right then the steward continuing in verse 3 then the steward said within himself what shall i do for my lord taketh away from me the stewardship i cannot dig to beg i am ashamed now hold up here what does it say here look at that verse then the steward said within himself what shall i do for my lord taketh away from me the stewardship i cannot dig to beg i am ashamed i am resolved what to do that when i am put out of the stewardship they may receive me into their houses now look at those verses right there where was the the steward's heart hold your place here go to jeremiah chapter 6. jeremiah chapter 6. jeremiah chapter 6. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 6, we will read verse 9, oh, on to verse 13. 9 on to verse 13 in Jeremiah chapter 6. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning? that they may hear. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, that they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Uh, you, you mean, uh, think about it like this. The Lord said, you can't be the steward anymore. I'm taking it away from you. And instead of bowing on to that truth and seeking the Lord's forgiveness for what he had done, putting his Lord first instead of himself. Oh, what did he do? Let's go. Let's continue here. Okay. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken. The aged with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be, whoops, and their houses shall be turned on to others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone is dealeth falsely
Back to Luke chapter 16. I am resolved, at verse 4, I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. See, the steward had no regard for his Lord. Show it to me. No. See, verse 2, his Lord said, you're out of here. You give an account. You, you're no longer steward. What I gave to you, I'm going to give to someone else who will do my will, more or less. And instead of, Lord, I, you're right, amen, I deserve this. Uh, like, uh, what was that? Like Mephibosheth said unto Ziba uh, after when King David was in the wilderness because of Absalom, right? And Ziba lied of Mephibosheth, saying something about how he thought that uh, uh, Absalom was going to restore to Mephibosheth what um, his father Saul had had him to have, but that wasn't true, okay? All right? But when King David uh, returned to his kingship, okay, during that time, um, Mephibosheth was like, you know, King David's like, you can share with Ziba because Ziba went with me while you were back there, whatever. Mephibosheth was like, well, give everything to him. Lord, go ahead, give it all. As long as you are back safe. See, Mephibosheth, in that incident, put David first, see, over himself, over his own need, okay? Yes, Ziba was dishonest in what he did. Yes, he was. But, nevertheless, Ziba went with the king, okay? Kind of similar about those who said um, when, that were idle, and, he, and the father said, go out into the field, and he said, I'm not going. But then he changed his mind and went, see. But see, putting the Lord first. When you sin and the Lord rebukes you or you get caught in your sin, what do you do? Do you look around or do you get on your knees and say, Lord, I deserve this. Your will be done. Have mercy upon me, a sinner who is chief. Your, your decisions are right, true, and just. But no, what did he do? Verse 5. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors to him. His Lord's debtors. These are people who owed his Lord, the rich man, okay? Though he were rich, but for your sakes he became poor. <laughs> Hello, okay? But, so he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him. These are people who owed him, owed his Lord something. And said unto, unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Now hold up. And he said, An hundred measures of oil. So this guy owed his Lord a hundred measures of oil. What is this? unjust steward do get, let me give half half of it instead of requiring it all instead of requiring it of it all okay now right here look at verse 4 I am resolved what to do that when I am put out of the stewardship they may receive me into their houses. See, every single one of us, every single one of us owes a debt. See, those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, paid our debt of sin that we owe with his blood, okay? And hence... Our reasonable service is to conform our lives unto the scripture and live according to his word. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Okay? We owe the Lord everything. You who are not saved, you owe the Lord. 
See, you have sinned against the Lord. All right? You owe him for that. And you can never pay it by yourself. You can't. You can't pay it. You can try to keep the law. You can try to keep the Ten Commandments perfectly. Nobody can do that. You owe the Lord. You owe the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, for your sin. All he asks is you come to him broken and contrite, knowing that you can't save yourself. See, you can't, you can't heal yourself. See, friend, you can't do that. Only the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, can. Okay? But you owe him. We who are his, we owe him everything. Yes. Hence, this is why doing this. Hence, it's why we're out there busting our butts. Okay. See, we owe gratitude. You who are lost, you owe that debt. And see, these people, verse 6, owed a hundred measures. And here's this steward. It's like, don't pay it back in full. Give him half. Don't pay the whole amount. Give him half. Kind of paw him off. Are you getting it? Let's continue. Then said he to another, How much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write Four score, two, four, six, eight, eighty. A little bit more than half, but not the whole. Do you see? This guy, what did he say? Okay. He said to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. Okay. Now, look at these two verses. What was owed in full, this guy, look at verse 6. Sit down quickly and write 50. Hold your place here. Go back to Jeremiah. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 23. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 21 under verse 22. I have not spoken. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. Verse 6 in Luke chapter 16. And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly. Quickly. Don't give him time to think about it. Quick. 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 And write 50. Verse 21 in Jeremiah chapter 23. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. How it it's ought to amaze you at how quick these devils are to run as to prophesy. Okay? Remember, prophesying in this dispensation is not revealing new truth outside of Scripture. Okay, the Old Testament prophets were revealing truth. Okay, they had the uh, they had the Law of Moses, the Psalms, and, and such and such like that. Okay, but the Old Testament prophets were speaking of things to come. We today we have the complete canon of Scripture, the authorized version of the Scripture. So today, prophesying is someone who is filled with the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that Spirit, speaking to you through the Word, the written, complete canon of Scripture, speaking to you the Word through the Holy Ghost, okay? Not revealing new truths outside of Scripture, like all these fake charismatic people are doing. No, no. See, Prophesying today, like Paul said, that ye should that ye would prophesy, speaking the word of truth through the Holy Ghost that is within you. See, that's what it means to prophesy today. Today. Okay? Today. 
Okay, the Old Testament prophet revealing new truth, foretelling of future events, is not for us today. The future is already uh, written out for us, dear friend. Okay? The future is already written out for us. Okay? And we, as the Church of the Living God, the ground and pillar of truth. And who is the ground and pillar of truth? Uh-huh. Okay? He and us, his body, his church, will speak through the scriptures unto you. Through a, vessel, uh, through a vessel of me for his use. That's prophesying today. But see, you get these fakes. Jeremiah chapter 23. I have not sent these, uh, 20, verse 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Verse 22. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. <laughs> Hence, someone who is a true prophet and false, a true prophet will be used of the Lord to speak his word, the authorized version of the scriptures, not something that he... Whoop, comes up with out of his own head from a spirit that you cannot discern which one is the Lord. No, no, no. Okay? See, you got these people out there who all they do is attack people. That's it. But it's funny you don't offer up what you think is the truth. No, you're just too busy attacking other people, right? Very busy. Oh, on WordPress and um, uh, My Life and Bible Hub and Time for Truth. Yeah, you're very busy, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. No wonder you ain't got time to uh, read the scripture because your father, the, de the devil, has you going in 50 directions all at once. And I know that because now I've been given uh, information on how to track kind of stuff, that kind of stuff like you guys do. Seeing in real time where these devils are going all over the internet. Very busy. But see, just attacking people, attacking people without giving them <laughs> truth. <laughs> without giving an, uh, even in the slightest of, okay, this is what they're doing wrong. This is what the truth is. See, false prophets can't do that. False prophets can't do that. They have something else in mind, their covetousness. Okay? Now, go back to Luke chapter 16, verse 8. Look at verse 8. Okay? And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. Okay? And the Lord commended the unjust steward. Think about that. Okay? Here, this his Lord here, the rich man, okay, gave unto the steward his goods to, you know, do what he would do. Okay? But he wasted them. All right? We know that. And here in a pinch, he ran quickly. Quickly! and got less than what was owed by these debtors. In doing that, exacting less, he made himself, the steward, look good unto those who owed. Now think about that. Now hold up. Think about that. Think about that. Think about that. Put on your little thinking cap now, okay? You got someone coming up to you. Just Believe. What about repentance? Ah! Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. You believe that Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures? Oh, yeah. You're saved! But what about the exchange? Ah, that's an option. That doesn't... No, 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 no. See? Are you getting that? See, you lost people. 
You owe the Lord and you're going to pay your debt, whether you like it or not. But see, you come to him broken, sorrowful for what you did to him. See, this steward was more sorry for what he was going to lose in the world rather than he had offended his Lord. Where is the steward's sorrow for what he did to his Lord? It's not in there. It's not in there, is it? No, he was more sorry because he was more concerned about his backside, see. And then you got this guy coming up to you. You know, you, you owe the Lord. There's a debt on you, lost man, that you can't pay. And then you got some schmuck coming up to you. <laughs> yeah, just believe. Just believe. Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write 50. Uh, really? All I got to do is believe? Yeah. Oh, okay, you're saved. <laughs> but oh, hey, what about new creature? I, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hey, his, his grace covers everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. You, you, you should... You should kind of get out of, but hey, it's okay. It's okay. You believe. And these prophets, these false prophets are running all over. They are all over. Wow. Um, I, like I said, I was, get, I was made privy to this information on how to find this stuff. And the day that I found that out, I was just dumbfounded. You are a very busy devil for your father. <laughs> your father, the devil. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. Not going to name you. I'm not going to name any of you because that's what you want. See. See. And right now you're saying, oh, he's talking about us, so we won. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. See, in the end, you're going to lose. <laughs> and see, there's a lot of people out there and, and incidentally, brethren, people, okay, brethren, brethren know this. Um, if you run across someone who's so busy pointing out what's wrong with other people and doesn't even give you what even he thinks truth is, uh, you, you pull your head out from betwixt your buttocks and use a little common sense, okay? Okay, yeah, okay, you're telling me, okay. All these guys are so wrong. So what's truth? What's truth? Well, look for yourself. Amen. Look for yourself. But where do I begin? Ah, just anywhere. Without having someone there to guide them? To help them? Yeah. 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 Okay. But now look at verse 8 again. Okay. The Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. Wisely for who? For himself, for the steward himself. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Why are they wiser? Because, verse 6 and 7, instead of going to these people who owed his Lord the full tale, he's like, give him half. Just take, here, give half, here, here. Not getting the full amount, but here, here's the half of it. Here, go ahead, go ahead. See? And he commanded him. It's like, you did well. You did well. See, this unjust steward in verses 6 and 7, he did not have his Lord's interests in mind. No, he had his own buttocks, his own interests in mind. Ah. Ah, hence your covetousness. Hence the true and false prophet, as it were. See, <laughs> I care about you. We care about you. These devils who come up and come down, up and down, up and down, up and down. They're, they're, they're following orders. 
You know, it is the springtime when kings go out to battle, right? Right? And it's no coincidence that these people are starting to come now. No coincidence. No coincidence. But see, this unjust steward had only his own interest in mind, not the interest of his Lord. And also, incidentally, those types of people as such who want to uh, cast mud on the servants of the Lord, they hate the, they hate the Lord because their Lord is who? Satan, not the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They don't care about you, people. They want to take you away from the truth so that you can join them in hell where they're going unless they repent. And there are a lot out there who have gone so far past the point of no return. They're gone. They're gone. It would be nice to see some of these guys repent and really make havoc for the uh, Jesuit order. But of course, see, y'all are cowards. Because what would happen if you turned on your order? You probably wouldn't make it 24 hours, would you? Would you? But let's continue. Now, verse 9. And I say unto you, who's to you? Make to yourselves friends of the, uh, of the mammon of unrighteousness. The mammon of unrighteousness. See, these guys in 6 and 7 owed the full tale. And here's this unjust steward thinking of his own backside, making him look, making himself look good and to the debtors who owed his Lord, okay, only half. A little bit more than half, okay? Not the full tale, okay? Making himself look good. Hence, making himself friends of the unrighteous mammon. It was righteous to pay back what in full. But see, this guy crept in there. It's like, I'll give half. I'll give half. Like I said, just believe. Skipping over <laughs> scriptural repentance. And, oh, yeah, I believe that. Ah, you're saved. But, well, the, the change life? Ah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You, you should, but it's, it doesn't happen. And it's definitely not a requirement. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I say unto you, verse 9, make to yourselves friends of the unrighteous mammon, of the mammon of unrighteousness, excuse me. Make yourselves friends of the world. Because look at verse 8. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, for our instruction in righteousness, those who are not of the church of the living God. Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting hab habitations. Yeah. Yeah. And on that holy place here, Romans chapter 1. Verse 32, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Oh, and also go to James, James chapter 4, James chapter 4. Come on, fingers, work with me, work with me, come on. James chapter 4. Hmm. 
verses 1 on to verse 4. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not. Why? Because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. I don't want to get ahead because I got, Lord willing, this big one coming around um, Passover about Pharaoh. Okay? But he entreated Moses till he saw that there was respite. Then again, Moses, heart, uh, Moses, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. First of himself, then the Lord went ahead and just kept doing it. Yes, to make a, an example. But the point is, he went to the Lord when he saw that there was respite. Then he went back to the, his, his stubborn ways. He asked, and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And see, these people are busybodies. Busybodies. Looking at verse 6 and 7 again, where it says, Take thy bill and sit down quickly. He's like, do this quickly. Give them what they want to hear. Busy bodies. Okay? Busy bodies. Busy bodies. What was 2 Thessalonians chapter 3? 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Oh, fingers work. Not Timothy. We're going to go to Timothy, but come on. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. <clears throat> Verse 6. On to... Verse 13. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which... He received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Verse 9. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. See, Paul had all the right and power to live of the gospel. Of the gospel, not off the gospel. Of the gospel. What does that mean? Paul had every right and every power to live of the gospel, meaning of what the church gave on to him for his existence, for his necessity, okay? You can debate that all day until you're blue in the face, you devils. Deal with the scriptures, okay? Deal with the scriptures, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 10, 8, 9, and 10, okay? Okay? He had the power to do that, but he didn't do that so he can make an example, what was this? Excuse me, I love this one. And and sample onto you to follow us. He had the power to do so, but he chose not to. And you, you also have to remember, Paul was a single man who had no necessity. He didn't burn like, hello, other men did. Okay? He didn't have a wife. He didn't have a child. All he had was himself. Okay? Okay? So let's continue. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. 
For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Busy bodies. Okay? Now then, now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Okay, looking at verse 11. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. <clears throat> Now, this in context is talking about what? The younger widows? But is that as far as it goes? No. Let's read from verse 12, 12 and 13, okay? Having damnation, because they have cast off their first faith, and with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies speaking things which they ought not. Now, in context, he's talking about younger women. Yes, but those younger women having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. Damnation? Okay? And with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, from website to website, and not only idle, but tattlers also in busybodies speaking things which they ought not. You devils out there who are so busy online for your father, the devil, you're like silly women. You're like women. Yeah. You're like a little girl. Yeah. Yeah. You're all like that. You little women. <laughs> yeah. Roll that up in your cigarette and choke on it there, buddy. Yeah, you're like a woman. You, you, uh, you're like the younger widows refuse, but the younger widows refuse. For when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies speaking things which they ought not. <laughs> Verse 15, uh, let's 14 and 15. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some are already turned aside after Satan. <laughs> you devils out there, you're a bunch of women. <laughs> you're a bunch of little girls going from sight to sight. You're women. <laughs> Oh, uh, women that have already turned aside after Satan. I know godly women. Godly women don't behave like that. My wife, sister in Canada, sister down south, sister over in Germany. Okay? Sister uh, over in Australia, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, a dear brother's wife, um, whose name I'm not going to name for their safety. Godly women don't do that. No, they don't. Godly women aren't like that. So hence, you devils are like women. Ungodly women. Da, 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 yeah, put that in your pipe. Oh, excuse me. Roll that up in your cigarette and smoke it. <laughs> All right. Verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. In uh, Luke chapter 16. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, 
Who will commit to your trust the true riches? And on that, 1 John 4, see the true riches are not the riches that come from this world, dear friends. 1 John 4, verse 5 and 6. They are of the world, like this unjust steward. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Only give half, a little bit more than half, but not the full tale, and you'll be okay. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Lowercase s on both those accounts, something that is imparted. Okay? Verse 12. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Which one are you serving? Which one are you serving? And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. And what about God knoweth your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Weakest excuse. Weakest excuse of the lost devil. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. For out of the mouth come thefts, murders, adulteries, lying, all that stuff. And that comes from the heart. Verse 15, And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Highly esteemed among men. Highly esteemed among men. Highly esteemed among men. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Verses 34 and 35. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Wrong, uh, wrong quote. Wrong quote. One second. Go to John chapter 5. Beg your pardon. John chapter 5. Verses 39 on to verse 47. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men. Now think about this. Now there are some out there like that devil, Jean Bashoff, who's in hell right now, say, would use this to say, you don't need to read the scriptures. And a lot of these charismatic and these people from these church buildings will say, hey, close the book. You don't need the book. You don't need the scriptures. Go on your feelings. Okay, and we already looked in Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10, or 8 and 9, or whatever, about the heart, okay? Don't you dare trust in your own heart. 
uh, you trust in the scriptures. Okay. But look at this. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men. Okay? Now, about this. Go to Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. Verses 9 on to verse 13. Whom shall I, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. A babe. A babe. Okay? Now on that, okay? On that, hold your place there. Go to 1 Peter. We'll, we'll get back to John. Okay? Go to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, okay? Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 12. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. The new scripture, the excuse me, the new Bibles remove the sincere milk of the word. They uh, sincere milk they remove of the word. Scriptures. Okay. That ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices accepted acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And what is our... Reasonable service? Mm -hmm. Huh? To not be conformed to this world, but be renewed by the to be renewed by the transforming of your mind. Just paraphrase that. Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. Look it up your own on your own time, your own self, okay? Alright. Ye also as living lively stones are built up a spiritual house. And holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. In other words, if you claim to be of the church of the living God, and yet the way you behave 
is identical to those of the world? Are you truly saved and born again and converted? Go back to Isaiah now. Okay? So, those who are babes, that desire the sincere milk of the word, that they may grow thereby, okay? That they may grow thereby. Verse 10 in Isaiah chapter 28. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Go to now, go to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. We're getting back to John. Don't worry about it. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 on to verse 30. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things, the truth, from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, no, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Oh, beg your pardon. It says learn of me. Not from me, of me. Okay? Very important to note that. The Catholic Bibles, you know, like the NIV, the ESV, and that kind of stuff, learn from me. It's learn of me. How do you do that? In a daily relationship. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Learn of him. Not just from him. And it says of him. And if you learn of him, are you not learning from him? See? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Someone who has not the Spirit of God can speak the truth because the Scriptures are truth. Okay? But there's only so far they really go. Isn't there? Isn't there? See, because now go back to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. In the context of the babe drawn from the milk, Wean from the breast. Or what is it? Did I get that? Wean from the milk and drawn from the breast. Excuse me. Okay. And in verse 12 or verse 11, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak unto this people. For those who are babes and those who desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby, and even us who have, uh, who have, uh, have our uh, senses exercised, okay, Strong meat, okay? Milk and meat. For those who are of such unto us, precept must be upon precept. You can't get enough of it. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Verse 10 in this context is talking about those who love the word. It has nothing to do with a dividing the word of truth, okay? This is not the Old Testament equivalent of rightly dividing the word of truth, dear friends. No. Right here in context, uh, verse 10 is someone who loves the word, who loves the Lord, okay? Because you love the Lord, you're going to love his word. If you do not truly love the Lord, what is the word going to be to you? 
Okay? Now, hold your place there. Go back to John now. Go back to John chapter 5. Go back to John chapter 5. Okay? Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men. Verse 42. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Come in his own name. Come in his own name. Someone who comes in his own name saying that everybody is wrong except me. Everybody is preaching heresy except me. That's what Martin Richling did. Martin Richling, who was a Jesuit. Okay? And who is his protege? Figure that one out yourself. Most of you of the Church of the Living God know who his protege is. Okay? But everybody else is wrong except you. Right? He comes in his own name. I am coming in my Father's name. Jehovah saves. Jesus. I am coming in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe, which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? You want to draw people away to yourself. You seek the honor of men. Verse 41, I receive not honor from men. Okay? Verse 44, How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Verse 45, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses in whom you trust, in whom ye trust. Verse 46, For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. See, these people didn't believe in Moses, for Moses wrote of him. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18 or 15, one of those, about the prophet, okay, who would come of your brethren, him you will believe. A prophet unto you I will raise up of your own brethren like unto me. Okay? See, they didn't believe Moses because they have not the love of God in them. Okay? And he says, For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. He's uplifting the scriptures. But see, verse 47, But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? See, he's exhorting the scriptures. You know what these guys' problems were? Go back to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 12. Isaiah chapter uh, 28, picking up at verse 12. See, those who are what? Um, weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, they're going to grow, desiring the, the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. And strong meat belongeth unto them who have their senses exercised. Okay, strong meat belongeth to those who are of full age. These are going to grow. Okay? And the more you get, the more you love of the Lord. Okay? You love the Lord, therefore you're going to love his word. And because you love the Lord and you love his word, precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Okay, verse 12, to whom he said, this is the rest therewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. Who are the they? John chapter 5, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Verse 13, in Isaiah chapter 28. But 
the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. What does that mean? It's mechanical. Go back to John. Come on, go back to John. Verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Okay? The natural man receiveth not the things of the Lord. Why? Because they are not born again. They have not the Lord within them interpreting the scriptures unto them. It's a mechanical thing. See, that's the difference. That's the difference. See, one can read the scriptures as a mechanical thing, meaning I have to read this and this and this in order that I will read through the scriptures in one year. Or I'm going to read this and this and this to say, okay, I've read the scriptures daily. For how? No, no, no. You're missing it. See, these guys read the scriptures as if a mechanical thing devoid of the spirit of truth. Okay? And you got to remember when our Lord said this, this was before the crucifixion. Okay? These people did not love the Lord. Verse 47, but if you believe not his writings, Moses, how shall ye believe my words? Okay? And look at, look at verse, verse 45. Do not think I will accuse you to the Father. <laughs> there is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. See, dear friend, simply reading the scriptures without the spirit of truth within you to guide you into all truth. What is that going to avail you? Now, a lost person can definitely, uh, absolutely, Read the scriptures and come to conviction. Yes, yes, that can happen. Absolutely. Happened to me when I was a lost man. When the Lord saved me. Going on 13 years ago. Converted me. Going on 13 years ago. Okay? As a lost man. I read the book of Romans, boy. And terror. Horror. Of what I had done to the Lord. Okay? Okay? The Lord brought me unto himself through the book of Romans. Okay? So a lost person can read the scripture and be convicted. Okay? But to grow thereby, to grow thereby, you need the spirit of truth. See? And see, therein is the difference. Therein is the difference. Okay? Go to Luke now. Beg your pardon. Go to Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. Now we read this. Okay? Luke chapter 13, verses 34 on to verse 35. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee! How often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not! Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. John chapter 5 again. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Right there. See, a lost person who gets his hands or her hands on the scriptures and begins to read them and is convicted and broken and terrified sorrowful what I did put the Lord on the cross Lord I'm sorry for what I've done to you 
I'm going to hell. See, and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. See, they were searching the scriptures. But in searching the scriptures, these, these guys were supposed to draw them unto Christ. And verse 41, I receive not honor from men. These men, just like the unjust steward, had man's admiration in mind. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. The love of God in you. Which these guys didn't. And unless you come to him, that you might have life, you're not going to have the love of God in you, dear friend. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Uh, what is it? What did he, uh, what is that in Mark chapter 2? Mark chapter 2, verse 17? Huh? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Go back to John. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Yea, hath God said, I will be like the Most High. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Do you get it? How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest the things that be of men, not of God. And then, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. <laughs> Why does he doesn't need to? He doesn't need to. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. See, these guys were just reading them and thinking and just reading them without believing on the Lord. This is for our instruction in righteousness, okay? Uh, you think that in just reading them and not going to the Lord, broken and contrite, okay? You'll get so far as conviction. But are you going to go to the Lord? Is reading the scriptures to you a point A, point B, point C? Mechanical? Lifeless? Look. People out there have dry times, okay? Okay, when reading the scriptures. But if you're of the church of the living God and you're reading the scriptures and the Lord is kind of giving you a dry mouth in reading these, you, you need to consider why. But even there, the Lord is showing you something. If this, if the scriptures aren't producing life within you, this problem, Is it a thing of mechanical nature to you? Or is this the word of life that our Lord speaks to you through? Do you have your own interest in mind or the interest of our Lord? For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? I don't seek honor from men. I really don't. I want the honor that cometh from God only. 
What about you? What about you? That's going to be it for this video. Uh, we we uh, kind of went off in several directions in this video, but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We can do that. We can do that. Put that in with my notes. I got a got another um, got another one here that I might be doing today. Uh, we'll see. Um, it's a, an expository video. Big one on Psalm ninety. Might be coming today. We'll see. But um, like I said, um, Lord use this as He will. You know, if you're living for the praises of men, you're not living for the Lord. And you got to realize, brethren, too, there are those out there who, number one, the infiltrators, um, they'll, they they want to get into the circles here of the brethren so they can come in and cause, you know, contempt and cause all kinds of problems. Uh, after a while, very easy to spot. But there are also those out there who are not of the Church of the Living God, but seek to associate themselves with those of his body in hoping that in associating with those of his body that it might kind of rub off on them. You know what I mean? These are those who are constantly seeking for fellowship with the brethren. Constantly. And there's nothing wrong with fellowship. Okay? Absolutely nothing wrong with fellowship. When the Lord gives time for fellowship with other brethren unto me, I, I, I treasure it. It's a precious jewel. But if you're not having fellowship with the Lord through his word on a daily basis, trying to get fellowship with his body to replace that one-on-one -on -one fellowship, there's a problem there. There's a problem there. Okay? And like I said, the devils. I remember that video of the two devils in England. One was is a provincial and the other one's just a crazy nut. Uh, the first thing that the one devil said, the problem is... Fellowship. Fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. Fellowship with the Lord. If, you're, if, if you don't have true fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, what good is fellowship with his body? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Okay, got, got to go. Got some things I'm going to go tend to. Like I said, we've been very, <laughs> very busy lately, brethren, sisters. And um, just thank you. Thank you, every single one of you. May our Lord Jesus Christ, to every single one of you who have helped us, recompense you with the sea, your mercy and charity. Thank you so much for watching, if you do. We love you, and on behalf of my wife, Susan, hi. May our Lord Jesus Christ bless you. In Jesus' name.